This is a Healthier Michigan podcast, episode 56. Coming up, we discuss how we can reduce inflammation through food. Welcome to a Healthier Michigan podcast, the podcast dedicated to navigating how we can improve our health and well-being through small, healthy habits we can start right now. I'm your host, Chuck Gatica, and every other week we sit down with a certified health expert from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, and we get into topics covering nutrition, fitness, a whole lot more. And in this episode, we're talking about ways we can reduce inflammation with food, and actually a few other tips thrown in as well. With me today, registered dietitian and certified health coach at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, Grace DeRosha. Good to have you with us. Hi. And we have to mention, you also have, you've got so many medals and badges that you wear and achievements, but one is that you have 20 different emails uh, that you use on Gmail. For what reason? I just learned of this. I use my Gmails to organize things so I don't get so much spam Hmm. in the emails that I use for important things. (laughs) So you go to the store and you register when they ask for it at checkout and you give them a certain email address and that tracks like coupons that are inbound or something? Yeah, so I have a special one for Target. They get their own. (laughs) Uh (laughs) But then I have another one that may have the word spam in it. I don't want to give it all to you because I don't want you guys to spam me. But then I have one like that I name for bills, so all the bills go in there. I have one that's named for the kids' school, so that any school emails go in there. I have one for the kids' dance classes. So yeah, we have separate emails, so it keeps us organized and helps reduce my stress. (laughs) <laughs> well, the famous organizational expert Peter Drucker had nothing on you. This is a whole episode all by itself, so uh, I know we're coming out of a time where we're all kind of hunkered down, but this is a really interesting thing. But uh, the topic today interests me, inflammation, because I think, I won't speak for everybody listening, but I always think of inflammation as like something on the outside. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, I was, I was biking and my knee is inflamed because I've got kind of a trick left knee. But I want you to explain the two main kinds of inflammation, then we can get into, you know, is it coming from inside, outside, all that stuff. Right. So put simply, inflammation is the body's natural response to harm. And without it, we would be super sick or dead, which is Hmm. dark, but it's true. So if we didn't have inflammation as that signal for our body, we wouldn't be well. And there are two different kinds. And this is what makes the difference. And I'm going to chime in on my soapbox here for a second, but it's funny to me because inflammation obviously has been around for a long time and it's now kind of a buzzword that you hear. And I've heard this from, what's his name? Gary V. He's like, marketers ruin everything. Well, I feel like that. I feel like poor inflammation. And now it's like all buzzy, but it's a real thing. Yeah. So to answer your question, Acute inflammation is basically that short duration of inflammation, usually lasts about two weeks. And it can be something as simple as a paper cut or something like the flu where you're sick. And the inflammatory response to that is to tell your immune system to please keep healing this infection from whatever, Mm -hmm. something very simple. But this is when we get into trouble with chronic inflammation it's usually less severe and you usually don't see or feel a symptom per se, but it can last longer than six weeks. And what's interesting about it is that it becomes an issue with your overall health in the long run. So I'm going to try to explain this because I I feel like people don't realize this. So chronic inflammation is unwanted substances in the body So, for example, like someone that smokes cigarettes or if you're consuming excess and extra food and calories, so extra fat cells, so that is something that the body doesn't really want. Mm -hmm. And our white blood cells will then continuously attack that. Sounds like really ominous, but what happens is these white blood cells are released to help the body reduce that inflammation. But if you have chronic inflammation, then your body starts to get confused and these immune cells eventually start to get mad at all of our organs, causing this chronic inflammation in the body where we might not necessarily feel like a cut, 
but you feel off, right? Yeah. Plus you can't tell. I mean, when you look at that Mm -hmm. paper cut or your ankle or whatever, that's a little red and tender or it feels warm. That's one thing. But if this is happening internally, how else would you know? Unless you say, man, I just feel pokey. I don't know why I'm not feeling good. You know, you may not Mm -hmm. know what's happened. Yeah. Right. And that's kind of the thing is like from this over time, chronic conditions can build up like cardiovascular disease. If you're having buildup in the arteries and your body's mad at you, that type of thing can lead to heart attack and stroke. So inflammation might be a buzzy word, but it's real. And we definitely want to avoid any chronic inflammation to the best of our ability. And with chronic inflammation, it may also be that you're not necessarily doing anything wrong. So if you're, and we should say that, you know, autoimmune disease, well, arthritis, right? That's a form of it. Your body could be attacking itself, and it doesn't mean that you've got a very bad habit that you've had for 40 years, and all of a sudden now it's showing up, right? Your body can still be trying to send these white blood cells and do their thing, but it's because there is something off that you didn't have anything to do with. Yes. I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah. Various autoimmune diseases fall into this chronic inflammation category like arthritis, RA, Crohn's, celiac. So those even type 1 diabetes, those are all autoimmune diseases that you have Mm. or hopefully don't have. Yeah. But that falls into like its own chronic inflammation family, if you will. So let's go back to the two kinds. We'll start with the acute. You know, this is short duration. It maybe goes on for a week or so. Symptoms appear quickly. Sometimes you can see those symptoms or feel them. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that eating food can help, you know, with the paper cut that looks red now that got infected while I'm home trying to be the office manager (laughs) because I wasn't quite used to everything I'm doing and I can change it with what I eat? So for both kinds of inflammation, how you eat and your lifestyle can definitely play an impact. If you are not eating healthy foods Mm -hmm. that will allow your, like for a paper cut, for that example, that will not allow your blood to clot quickly or heal quickly. So a lot of times people with diabetes, if they get a cut or something that injures their skin, they have a harder time healing because of their chronic inflammation. That's interesting. And, you know, we've heard as we're coming through and out of this uh, COVID-19 situation, I've read a lot of stuff that somehow, especially in kids, right, this idea that inflammation was being triggered. And I know you're saying this is now a buzzword, so I'm not sure that that falls under the same category. Mm -hmm. But I'm really interested in understanding maybe it's more the chronic kind because you've also mentioned heart disease. You're saying that internally inflammation can do what that causes the internal workings of our body to kind of go haywire, right? Yeah. So think about this. If someone's eating a lot of fat and they become overweight or obese or a lot of different refined foods, and then they get arthrosclerosis, which is plaque buildup in the arteries, Mm. that is causing inflammation in the body because it's unwanted. Interesting. And then when, let me not make any assumptions here, when your body is sending the good guys in to go fight the bad stuff, does that allow other parts of your body? Is it a zero-sum game, I guess, is my ultimate question, but does that allow your body to be open for other things to start to happen? Because you're fighting this internal inflammation that you could have put off by eating right? Chuck, always with the tricky questions. So can I say it depends? It depends on the person and it depends on how long they've been eating Mm -hmm. not as well as they could have been or how long they've been eating well. And so that's the thing is I bring this up, sorry, like crazy fad dieters, but if you all of a sudden are like, Gluten is the devil. I'm never having gluten again. Well, gluten isn't really the thing that's causing your inflammation in one day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. uh, Unless you have like celiac or to be clear, like any kind of allergy or intolerance. But when we get crazy with like these, you have to cut out this food group because it's always going to do this. Like you're smarter than that. Yeah. And there's no balance. I mean, you know, I've I've said this before of talking with you, which is always a joy, but uh, this idea of balance, right, is so important. And I think we're going to discover that here, too, in terms of eating to cut down on or at least reduce inflammation Mm -hmm. through, you know, a diet that is filled with all the good stuff. I mean, let food be thy medicine, I think is so real. Yeah. And uh, shocker, everyone, 
the things that I'm about to tell you that you should be eating and not eating really is a well-balanced, nutritious, healthy diet. All right. So what are the, what, let's start with the list of what we should eat if we're looking to cut down an inflammation. What should we be eating? Okay. Ready? <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> it's not a shocker. And vegetables. Yeah. Okay. Not a shocker, but fruits and vegetables. So they have antioxidants, which means that they're against oxidation in the body and oxidation in the body is a cause of inflammation. So I know like some of these words you hear and you're like, what does that even mean? They fight free radicals in the body, which are bad things and a variety of things from cells to hormones. And it fights all of those things in the body. A couple like to be a little bit more specific, if you're picturing like deep red or purpley things like berries or grapes or cherries, those definitely have a variety of antioxidants that can help really boost that immune system mm. and aid in reducing inflammation. And would that be the same for veggies then if we're looking at the deep colors of the rainbow to try to pick generally bright colored things, peppers or whatever? Yes. I always say dark leafy greens and bright colored things. Mm -hmm. So peppers, this is an interesting fact. Most, especially in America, less than 15% of people in America have leafy greens every day. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty wild. Please have some, like in any way, like add them to your eggs, just chew on some spinach, throw it in your smoothie, have a salad, have it warm and wilted with your salmon, whatever it is, but try to get those in. And even worse for kids, less than 8% of kids have leafy greens. Mm -hmm. So that dark leafy green color, I mean, think about green as the color of things growing and being healthy outside. So you can imagine how good it is for your body, especially that vitamin K that we have in those leafy greens can really help with reducing inflammation. And so we've got peppers, we've got uh, what else would not be as bright? Well, tomatoes, are those good or bad for inflammation? Because I see some little ad that pops up every, every once in a while on the internet. About nightshades? Well, no, about tomatoes. Like, oh, this is not good. And I thought, come on, it's a tomato. How much stuff do we eat that's even down to pizza sauce? Let's be fair. Yes. That, you know, is filled with tomatoes. I love tomatoes. I don't know. I love tomatoes too. And again, it's one of those things where do you really think just not eating a tomato is going to reduce your inflammation or that it causes some like... Absolutely not, no. That's what I mean is like some of these things that pop up and we're consuming so much of that that we're like, oh my gosh, tomatoes are bad or Tom Brady doesn't have nightshade vegetables. I'm not going to have nightshade <laughs> yeah. vegetables. Yeah. Even if you don't have nightshade vegetables like Tom Brady and maybe, you know, and that's something to cue into right now, I think, is that everybody's body is a little different. You know, maybe... The acid for him causes whatever. I don't know. But if you don't have a tomato, you're probably not going to throw a football like him anyways. Yeah. Yeah. And tell us so, again what nightshade veggies are. So basically, the bulk of their growing happens at night. So mm. tomatoes, eggplants, those are two probably of the main ones that fall into that category. I see. Okay. And of course, tomato is always one of those fun ideas because it's a trivia question. Is it a fruit or is it a veggie? And I think technically, isn't it a fruit? It is. Yeah. Okay. See, ding, 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 ding. Cucumbers and peppers are technically fruits too. I didn't know that. What? It's all about the seeds. What about mushrooms? They don't have the bright colors necessarily, but um, good? Yeah. They're a fun guy. I just did uh, that. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Uh, so any kind, it doesn't matter? Yeah. Mushrooms are great. They actually are filled with antioxidants. I know I'm disregarding my rule of brightly colored, but I feel like... All colors are welcome. But you know what you just talked about, just the one line, the fruits are a little different. I never add fruit to my uh, egg white omelet or something. But if you take everything you just discussed in terms of veggies, including broccoli, frankly, and you chop it up enough, peppers, mushrooms, tomato, and then you, you make the omelet and you put a little guac on it or something, you know, with a little salsa mm -hmm. just to spice it up, that is... Everything that you're saying we should do, it is common sense, really. And how many of us are putting, you know, a little spinach and all this stuff in and it's just filled with goodness? Yeah. I mean, I always say if you can get a fruit or vegetable in at every meal or snack, you're doing good. You just made me hungry. That sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll get going on it myself in a minute, too. Uh, what about fish? What if we're flexitarian, you know, so we're not a vegetarian. We're, we're mm -hmm. trying to have more veggies, Look but fish you. is still good, huh? 
Well, I don't, I don't even understand all the names. I, I, it's, <laughs> I know it's all contextual, but I see these names pop up on the internet. I'm a flexitarian. I don't know what that means. Are you stretching while you're eating your omelet? Like, what is that? <laughs> it means that you're flexible with the way you eat uh, and that you include days that are more plant-based versus not. I would say I'm probably flexitarian if I had to label myself. I guess I am too. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the number one place to get omega-3 fatty acids, which is an essential fatty acid that our body doesn't make, is from fatty fish. Mm. And omega-3 fatty acids help reduce inflammation. One of the issues, and you've heard me say this before, especially in America, like our Western diet here, it has more omega-6s which are also good for you, but the imbalance of omega-3 and omega-6 can actually cause inflammation. So we want to make sure we're getting those omega-3 fatty acids in. And again, the best place to get that is fatty fish. And if you look at the blue zones, those hot spots in the world where, you know, people are living to the centenarians, you know, living to 100 mm -hmm. plus, what do they have a lot in their diet, right? A lot of veggies. Yes. It's, it really is table or farm to table. And they're having a lot of fish, the Mediterranean diet, the same yes. thing, right? I mean, those things emerge right away and it's common sense, but come on, then maybe it's yes. something we should think about. Yeah, The Mediterranean diet always wins all the dietitians, all the healthcare professionals. That is your winning diet. Huh. So that means my hummus is still a good idea. Definitely. Okay. That's good. That's good. Then what about herbs and spices? We hear about this, you know, affecting us in certain ways. Do you believe in that? Like a certain amount, a little quarter teaspoon of something, something can really help us? Yeah. I always think getting it from food is better mm. and why not use it for flavor? So I feel like herbs and spices are a double whammy of goodness. One, they add flavor and a lot of antioxidants and anti-inflammatory properties. And we'll talk about a few of those in a second before I'm done with my rants. But the other part of that is that they also, when you add herbs and spices for flavor, you usually add less salt, less fat, and less sugar. Mm -hmm. So it's that double whammy of goodness. I have to bring up turmeric is definitely the one that people are talking about a lot right now. And it is true. There, there is definite science and research behind this. Turmeric has a main ingredient called curcumin. Curcumin in turmeric is the one. That is the thing that really helps bring down some inflammation in the body. Okay. The key there, and I cannot stress this enough because I see people like, I'm just going to put turmeric in my smoothie. If you do not add black pepper at the same time, and it could be in a different thing. You know, you could have your smoothie with turmeric and then you're having some eggs and you add some dashes of black pepper. But you have to have black pepper with it because it opens the door to let your body use the curcumin in turmeric properly. Hmm. And if you don't have it, then it's just going to add color and flavor. Very interesting. And then some of the other stuff you would, I mean, sage, rosemary. Ginger. Ginger. Okay. We use a lot of these things around the holidays, but as well, you can put it in your pea soup and the crock pot. I mean, there are lots of ways to sneak this stuff in Yes. because it just tastes good. Absolutely. I mean, rosemary or different Italian seasonings that you can enjoy in any Italian dish or any dish, really. Yeah. You know, just a few dashes for flavor here and there is always going to help in the long run. Ginger tea. I love, I put ginger in my smoothies. I love ginger. And you know, when you hear of ginger, that's also got a calming effect on the digestive system, right? Mm -hmm. Like upset stomachs and things. Is that related to inflammation or is that completely separate? Does that mean my stomach was maybe a little off? Yeah. So a uh, stomach ache is inflammatory. Hmm. You know, I love probiotics. So probiotics are definitely something else to help yeah. boost the immune system, which means that we're going to help reduce inflammation in the body. See, I thought maybe it was related. I'm not as dumb as I look. I mean, I <laughs> thought that maybe there was something there to this. So um... I knew that you knew. <laughs> Thanks for sticking up for me. So chocolate, not like we have to run out and eat everything from Easter that was left over, you know, for the next three months. But what kind of chocolate and why? I want to be super clear about this. It's dark chocolate uh -huh. and dark chocolate, meaning it should have at least 60% cacao. So chocolate is made out of cocoa nib, cacao, but milk chocolate, why it tastes so good is because they add butter and cream and sugar. So it's fat and sugar, which we know mm -hmm. is not good for inflammation. Yeah. But the dark chocolate itself, like it comes from a plant. It's a bean. I mean, 
you've seen those memes. They're like, I had chocolate. It comes from a plant. So basically, I just had a salad. Yeah. When we get into trouble is what we mix it with. So a little dark chocolate every day is good. And it has some probiotic and prebiotic effect. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to make my... Uh my special pasta sauce recipe and it's just all you know crushed and uh, diced tomatoes and um, it's really fresh it has nothing to thicken it up but i use virgin olive oil extra virgin olive oil not butter that's good right i mean extra virgin olive oil in a diet is also on the good side of what to eat here yeah extra virgin olive oil olives they have monounsaturated fats which are definitely good for heart health and also we know that monounsaturated fats like avocado or olive oil has been known to help with pain for people that have arthritis. Really? Yeah. And you mean just taking it, not taking a teaspoon of it a day, like the old you know, thing about castor oil when my grandma was a kid. You mean just putting it into your diet, cooking it into things is fine. Yes. I feel like I want people to enjoy their food. You do not want to have a bite of oil. Yeah. And that's, again, something you can bake into. Well, not the cake. I don't know that you put olive oil in the cake, but, you, you know. You know what? It's... I literally just made last night. What? My emotional baking. A blueberry <laughs> lemon ricotta olive oil cake. Wow. And? Oh, my gosh. It's so good. Well, I've heard of them. I've never made one or had one. So it doesn't taste overtly like there's nothing that you can tell is olive oil. No. Oh. Well, because you add sugar. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, no, it adds a lot of moisture. So it, If you want to have like a delicious moist cake, I made this more as like a breakfast cake that I had some last night for dessert, Mm -hmm. but it's delicious. Oh, so good. (laughs) Um, What's left on the what's good for us when we're looking at cutting down on inflammation? Anything else we should pay attention to? So green tea and different teas. You know, I love matcha as well, which is like green tea leaves pulverized into a powder. Just the amount of antioxidants they carry Mm -hmm. is so good for the body. So enjoying green tea, you can have green ginger green tea. That's always delicious. So adding a couple of uh, a double whammy of anti-inflammatory foods in there. Perfect. But, you know, what I'm encouraged by is that as interesting and you could even argue as basic as some of these ideas are of what to eat, if we're just shifting to a good, healthy diet anyway, well, then you've got good heart health. Mm -hmm. You know, heart health equals brain health. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you know, it's just... It all comes together and then you're cutting down an inflammation and you weren't really working hard at it because you didn't have to go to the doctor and get a prescription for something. You know, it just makes sense. Yes. If we could all just do our best to follow a more nutritious diet and add some of these foods in. And what's interesting is that in the process of doing that, you also start to eliminate some of the foods that we shouldn't have. So what's that list now? Go ahead. Burst the bubble. (laughs) Do it gently. I know. Anything like with refined carbs, extra added sugars, fried foods, processed foods, sugary drinks to fall into that added sugar pile. What people would typically call, quote unquote, junk food, treat food. Those things, just the added sugar, the excess fat, the trans fat, the processing with chemicals and additives, our body doesn't like that. And and so it becomes a trigger. You know, those white blood cells are like, what is this? Mm -hmm. Let me go attack that real quick. And over time, we get into trouble. And what about the gamut then of lunch meat and, and bacon and smoked meat? I mean, you know, what about stuff like that? Because that's processed. Yes. So, you know, I'm a lover of trying to be kind to ourselves and enjoy things in moderation. Mm -hmm. And so I still think that's okay, but just don't have bacon every single day, 17 pounds. Yeah. Well, that moderation thing is really huge because even you talk about making this olive oil cake. So not only are we able to reward ourselves or we're kind of, you know, having a great day baking with kids or however it works out, but it is a little bit of a treat and it doesn't mean you're eating it every day. Right. So I think that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. And you know, we've talked about food can be fun. Food is creative. Food is tradition and culture and family and love. But again, if we do 
make some better choices, you will find that you will not be having as much of that. And plus, you won't want it because it doesn't feel that great in your body. You know, it will be curious to see after the fact when people start studying so much of this time that we're coming out of, of what diets may have changed, uh, maybe mm-hmm. even for more good than bad. For instance, maybe you stopped going to get the drive through burgers every day because that's all the time you had when you were at work. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it may be interesting to see, not just to see the stuff studies that talk about people that had bad diets, quote unquote, and how maybe that led to bad health, which then made them more susceptible to issues. But then also how maybe, maybe uh, we got a little more healthy. I'm seeing all this stuff on the internet. Are you seeing, uh, you know, people are baking bread who have never baked a loaf of bread in their life. And I'm thinking, well, that is so cool. Yeah. Or like who have never cooked. Yeah. I have so many friends that, and trust me, they were not into cooking. They were, they would dine out all the time. They would get fast food. They would have convenience foods and they're cooking and they're enjoying it. And I'm seeing them take pictures of their food. And I'm like, who are you? What? This is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. And you you kind of left us before I went off on that tangent about, you know, the studies and what may be coming. Sugary beverages. When you think of that, we can obviously talk about, depends on the word you use, soda or pop or both. Right. But sport drinks, I mean, a lot of them, except the zero type. Yeah. I mean, you've got a lot of sugar baked into the cake there, huh? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, there are like sweet tea, sugar drinks, energy drinks, pop, soda, juice that isn't really juice Mm -hmm. (laughs) because they have added sugar in them sports drinks have this connotation of like if you ever exercise you should drink this but even the zero type ones those are sugar sweeteners and they're processed and there's color added in so just trying to be careful about our choices And also read the packaging because, you know, when you said, you know, drinks that aren't really juice, the first thing that popped in my mind are juice packs, you know, the little boxes or whatever, little pouches. And just because they're orange doesn't make them orange juice. I mean, we've known that for a long time. Yeah. There's probably food coloring. Yeah. You can look across the diet of your kids too, to make sure that everything is good. Yeah. When we say eat the rainbow, I'm not talking about the food coloring. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about good and bad foods, common sense to some extent, but we can all continue to try to strive toward this healthy, you know, what to eat side of life. But what else can we be doing to reduce inflammation? I know my list right here is going to shock you and it's not going to, but your everyday healthy lifestyle choices. This is an interesting one, exercise. Obviously we hear about exercise, it's really good for us. It helps build lean muscle, helps reduce the fat in our bodies. But what's interesting about exercise, and this is why you need to have rest days, is exercise actually causes inflammation in the body. It is acute inflammation, so it's short term, and it's on purpose. Like when you are, I I know you know this, but for the people, when you are trying to build muscle or gain more lean muscle, you're actually tearing muscle fibers that need to heal. And that's inflammation. So again, it's acute inflammation and it's necessary and an important inflammation for your body. But just thinking about something that simple and how there's you know, the acute inflammation that is good for us that helps with healing and helps us heal from exercise, but then the chronic inflammation that we really want to battle. Well, and you know, that's interesting because whether you're using five pounders or Mm -hmm. 80 pounds, you know, you're, I'm picking it up and I'm putting things down, you know, and I'm doing (laughs) curls. That's what the intent is. You're kind of, um, you're in essence injuring that muscle tissue. So then you're Mm -hmm. saying, give it a day of rest so it can actually come back. The inflammation was the reaction that would naturally occur. And then all of a sudden your biceps are bigger in a month. I love this. Yeah. And people hear that all the time. They're like, don't work your biceps since we're going with that two days in a row. And some people are like, why not? Like I can still do it or I'm not that sore, but there's a science to it. That's the reason is that we're actually tearing the muscle fibers, letting them heal so that we can build that lean muscle in our bodies. I'm, I'm holding my bicep right now. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's important to like <laughs> t- take that time to allow the body to heal. You can work a different body part the next day if you want to continue doing that, but just being smart and this is the reason why. And again, if the way you're going to manage a workout, if you're into cardio, if you're going for a bike ride now, if you're going out mm-hmm. for walks, et cetera, that's going to be connected to other things that are helping you in your body as well, along with being a reducer of inflammation. 
Well, yes, exercise is a stress reducer. It helps you sleep better. It mm. pumps happy hormones through your body more efficiently and more regularly. I could go on for days about exercise as the best medicine. Well, and the mental health part of this, which now is we're able to come out and do some things, you're managing your stress because I can't imagine, I haven't seen the, all the stats on this, but the amount of anxiety, mm-hmm. even depression that's come out of this time of hunkering down. So all of those ways to uh, blow off a little steam, to you know, yeah. lose some weight, it all is just so interconnected and it all makes sense. And yet so many of us, Grace, just, uh, I'm just I, I'll just sit here today. I'm just going to sit know. around. Yeah, I know. You know that saying, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. I don't want you to eat (laughs) eat an elephant, so we're super clear. But doing something is better than doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And every time you do something, just think you were lapping your old self that used to sit on the couch or someone else who was sitting on the couch if you're competitive. Yeah. Baby steps, right? I mean, just if everybody can start something, if they begin it. So let's just begin it. Yeah. Yeah. and, And no one's perfect. I didn't work out. Did I work out yesterday? Oh, I did work out yesterday. I went for a walk with my kids, but it was a simple way to get active as opposed to like a usual thing that I do. But just finding a way to keep moving yeah. is always good. A body in motion stays in motion. I got all the quotes today. That's good. That's good. I'm going to get a t-shirt made by Thursday <laughs> of next week. Uh, so let's talk about taking supplements. You've already taught us about turmeric and how we need to have black pepper in there. So just because you're popping a bunch of extra stuff doesn't all make it good for you. But are there things that we can take a supplement to help reduce inflammation in a capsule? So this is what I would tell people. You know, I supplements are a supplement of the diet. So ideally you are getting that from food. But if you know you're not, talk to your doctor, see if there's any recommendations. A lot of people don't like fish or they don't eat enough of it. So maybe they need a fish oil supplement to help get their omega-3 fatty acids in to help reduce inflammation. Mm -hmm. Maybe, especially in Michigan, right now we've had some sun lately, but there's not enough sun, so you're not getting enough vitamin D. Right. And when your body's not in balance with the things that it needs, it's confused. And not always does it cause inflammation, but it could. You know, years ago, I um, and I don't know if I mentioned this before, years ago I had a chance to interview Dr. Oz in New York City, right? Mm-hmm. And I, it was the winter, and I said, what's the number one thing we can all do that's just so holistic, so easy? He said, I want everybody, even to the winter, I want you to go out in your parka if you have to and roll your pant legs up. Now, I'm trying to picture this in Central Park, right? So we're talking (laughs) about being in Manhattan. He said, I want you to, if you can take off your jacket, maybe it's hit 45 or 50, roll up your sleeves during your lunch break and just expose some of your skin to the sunshine and just sit there. Even if it's 10 minutes, just sit there and soak up some sun. And that was his exact point about becoming your own little vitamin D factory, right? Yes. Which we kind of get that when we go for walks and stuff. Yeah. Usually I hear around, depending on how much um, melanin you have in your skin, 10 to 15 minutes, arms and legs exposed hmm. to the sun. Yeah. Because that is our most efficient way to make vitamin D. You know, obviously we don't always have sun if you're in Michigan right? or in any state. You know, there's snow, there's rain, there's different seasons. So a vitamin D3 supplement, which is the closest to what our body makes, becomes really important. So as we're still talking about these things you can do to support the reduction of inflammation, what else should we be considering? What should we stop doing if it's a habit right now? So please avoid tobacco. Watch your recreational drug use, limit alcohol intake. Those are definitely, the, obviously, you know, we talked about the food component, but to piggyback off of that, mm-hmm. those things are important. Exercise, get enough sleep. That's a big one. So adults are supposed to get around seven to nine hours of sleep a night. Oh, I definitely don't get that. Do you? Um, I'm probably on the seven hour side. I, my body has never required a lot and I'm not a good napper, but yeah, I'm probably on the lighter side of that range. Yeah. So yeah, getting enough sleep is huge. It allows your body to renew, refresh. If you don't get enough sleep, usually your cortisol levels, which is a hormone in the body are elevated and then that can put you into chronic inflammation. Yeah, and I guess the as you leave us here, there is a way to wrap this up with a nice bow, but give us the, um, as you see it, what is the list? What should we be thinking about a main takeaway from this entire discussion about inflammation? 
I think we hit on it, but definitely from what we've talked about, and I know we talk about this often, trying your best to get some of these healthy and nutritious anti-inflammatory foods in while at the same time decreasing the amount of junk food. I hate saying junk food, but Mm -hmm. those foods, high sugar, high fat, refined carbs, processed foods as much as possible. And then tick down your basic list, getting enough sleep, getting some exercise, taking away some of those extra things that you don't need like tobacco or rec drugs or too much alcohol and do what you can to limit stress. So I feel like limiting stress goes with getting enough sleep and getting exercise. You know what I mean? Well, and if you're eating at the wrong times or you're having the half of the half gallon of ice cream at 11 o'clock at night because you're stressed out and you're watching the news or whatever, you know, there are these things that we all can influence. And I think that comes back down to doing something you often talk about, which is, I don't know, being in tune with your body. I mean, really listening. And we're all able to kind of tweak you know, these things that we can throw more good looking veggies and stuff into our omelets. We all have the ability to do these little minor tweaks that are not like rocket science and, you know, won't necessarily change everything, but it allows us to see, hey, did I feel better after a couple of days of that? And right. or maybe not, or let me take out the sugar drinks, you know, see how yeah. I feel. So, yeah. Yeah. Listening to your body is such a key in everything with health because chronic inflammation you don't necessarily feel, but you know if you're not working at your best. So doing that becomes such an important part of the process. And think about what you can do today. You know, sometimes it can feel overwhelming because we do know what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. But thinking about what you can do today to start that you can own is so important. Just be real because, you know, that's part of those smart goals, right? Realistic is part yes. is the R and smart. And I think that that's a part of this that's so important. And, you know, we started the show by joking around about all your emails and all the, you know, all the titles you have and all these <laughs> letters behind. You should be a doctor. I'm just saying, I, I can't really give you the degree, but if I could. Wait, did my mom call you? <laughs> no. Why? Oh, she oh. wants you to still to be a doctor? Oh, I mean, I am in my 40s and she... She has given me MCAT like study prep course flyers. Let me tell you, I worked with a guy who was in media for his entire career in broadcasting and in his early to mid 50s, he decided to go back to school and become a doctor. He changed it. it and he had kids at home. I'm telling you, he changed his entire life. And I thought, how can you not appreciate this guy? I mean, that Chuck, was don't a huge... tell my mom. <laughs> well, okay. Not like we want her to hear this. Okay. Hey, Grace, no. it's good to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, that was Dr. Grace DeRocha, <laughs> who's, oh, not quite yet, uh, from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. We always appreciate her insight and wisdom. And we want to thank you for listening to a Healthier Michigan podcast. It's brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. If you like the show, you want to know more, there are lots of episodes. Uh, maybe you're going for your healthy walk. Take us with you. It's a healthiermichigan.org slash podcast. You can leave us reviews, ratings on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher, and you can always get new episodes for your smartphone, your tablet, whatever device you're using. Be sure to subscribe to us at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. I'm Chuck Gatica. Take good care. Be well.